This video will discuss the completion of the first multimedia analysis for English 7. The multimedia analysis unit will feature several of these analyses, focusing on the connections and comparisons and contrasts between text expression and something other than text, sound or image. This is the bundle on my big campus. As you scroll through, you'll see the first assignment is the multimedia analysis number one, The Outsiders, which was due on Monday, March 24th. I have graded these assignments for the year of 2014, and unfortunately, many challenges still exist for students completing multimedia analyses. So during this video, I'd like to show you how exactly I would have gone through completing this assignment. I'll take you step by step and help you understand how to succeed on the next one. Here's the assignment. Multimedia Analysis, The Outsiders. This assignment asks you to focus on two sources, a novel source and a film source. The novel source is The Outsiders, written by S.E. Hinton, and the film source is The Outsiders, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. So, a film and a novel. And I have links to the scenes that I should examine for the film. And I can use my digital copy of the novel for evidence. I have that available right here. So first, I must understand that I'm talking about these two different sources. Source 1 is my novel source. Source 2 is my film source. As I read through the assignment, I can read the discussion. Authors use words as descriptive language to set scenes. Filmmakers use color, lighting, set, and actors to do the same. In this activity, we will examine how S.E. Hinton describes the setting of the church and countryside in Windricksville and the scene of Dally's death, compared to how Francis Ford Coppola depicts it on film. So it seems that I'm about to explore how the same scene can find expression in both text and sound and image in film. Okay, good enough. I have a general overview of what's going on. It seems like a simple compare-contrast sort of assignment. Scroll down, and I have concepts. Descriptive language, cinematography, mise-en-scene. Well, certainly I understand some of these concepts, but I definitely don't understand all of them. So, descriptive language I've probably learned before, words that appeal to the five senses. Cinematography, the use of light and color in film. This could be a little bit confusing, but the assignment says watch tutorials for more information. Let's pause there for a moment. What am I doing? First, I am reading the assignment. I've done that. Then, I should watch tutorial videos and take notes. Hmm. The assignment has asked me to understand the concepts, and those seem pretty central to completing the writing. Watch the tutorials. Those, of course, are available on my big campus. Here is a tutorial. Here is a second, a third, and a fourth. And all of these deal with film concepts. The film concepts that are covered here in cinematography and mise-en-scene. I watch those, but more importantly than just watching those, I take notes. Students often fail to take notes while watching film tutorials or video tutorials of any sort. This means they're probably watching the tutorial and not paying much attention to it. So I will make sure to take notes while I'm watching. I'll pause and write something down every once in a while, and that way I'll understand what's going on. Let's say I've done that. The next step is to understand the writing task. And here's the task. Write a supported analysis that discusses how the two depictions of the Windricksville setting and the outsiders compare or contrast. And then another task. Write a supported analysis that discusses how the two depictions of the death of Dally and the outsiders compare or contrast. OK, two different prompts. Let's take a look at this first one. They seem like separate activities. At this point, I am understanding the writing task. I'm trying to understand exactly what my teacher wants of me. Then I see below writing guidance. Well, this assignment shows me exactly how to complete it. Your written discussion should follow this format. Topic, sentence, discussion of style, and source one. It looks like my teacher has given me all sorts of charting, mapping, and direction for how to complete the assignment. So I've read my prompt, and now I see a six-step model for how to write this paragraph. That leads me to believe that I'll write about six sentences, maybe some more, but definitely I'll focus on at least six. A topic sentence, I seem to understand that. 
discussion of style in Source 1. What does he mean by style? Evidence from Source 1. Okay, I understand what that is. And what's Source 1? Oh, yeah. It's the novel. That's what was listed above. Style in Source 2, once again, not quite sure what that means. What is Source 2? Well, Source 2 seems to be the film. And, of course, a conclusion sentence is pretty simple. Throughout the discussion, use the language from the concept section above. Take notes during class discussion to help. The concepts section, that means this. This must be what style means. So style in source one, that must be descriptive language. Because source one is the novel. Source two, what is this? This strange thing of cinematography. Could mean light, color, or this mise-en-scene, which I learned is framing and production design. When you're reading the writing task and, under and reading the guidance material, including any model example if one is provided, then you must understand exactly what it means because it's a map, it's a guide for how to write the paragraph. I understand that this paragraph depends on concepts, concepts that are listed here and explained in these video tutorials. I must understand those concepts before moving forward. Okay, gotten that far. And look, the assignment even shows me how to write the topic sentence. I have two different formats, comparison and contrast. Although Source 1 and Source 2 use different styles, they both description of similar goals. That seems like a formula. Here's an example. Although S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders and Francis Ford Coppola's The Outsiders use different styles, they both depict the vacant lot as a quiet and peaceful place. That seems like a pretty straightforward and sensible sort of topic sentence, and it looks like the second is just the same thing. I have a lot of guidance on how to write this. I understand how to write the topic sentence and how the paragraph will develop. I'm almost ready. But next, I should check the grading rubric, just so I understand how my teacher will score me. I check the grading rubric here. It looks like the grading rubric has almost as many points as that map of six ideas for the paragraph. Look, topic sentence, source one, evidence, source two, evidence, conclusion. Idea discussion seems to be the only one on top, and what does that mean? The student emphasizes the concepts. Okay, so this is about concepts. This rubric relates to these six points. So I understand that I must do each one in order to score full points. And I can read this rubric in more detail to see what exactly it entails. So I have checked the grading rubric. All right. I think it might be about ready to go. So when I'm thinking about this, what's next? Well, I've got to view these clips. I haven't viewed them yet. So let's say that I will view, <clears throat> excuse me, the Dallas getting killed clip. I understand my color and light discussion. I'm watching this, and as I watch it, sometimes I pause. Interesting that the image presents mostly blue and black. Dark colors. It's a dark scene. There's very little light. In fact, where are the light sources? Oh, I see some light there from the cars. Oh, light from the street lamps, and look at that. Mist fog obscuring everything. So low light, blue and black, fog. Oh, and look at that framing. Notice that I'm pausing the image and taking a look at what I can see through analysis. Fog, black, blue, a little bit of green, but it's pretty dark. Low lighting. I've got quite a lot to talk about here. So I'll take some notes. film. Low light, blue and black, fog. 
That relates to what was discussed in the film tutorials, talking about color and light. What's next? Oh, I must gather evidence, and that means that I've gotten that information from the clip, but I also need information from here. The task is to see how S.E. Hinton's text and the film compare or contrast, so I need to find Dallas's death here in the text. Let's see if I can find that. Scrolling through. Hmm. Okay. Haven't found it yet. <clears throat> oh, wait. There it is. We reached the vacant lot just as Dally came in, running as hard as he could from the opposite direction. It looks like this is the discussion. I have a quotation now. The wail of a siren grew louder and the police car pulled up across the street from the lot. Doors slammed as the policeman le leaped out. <coughs> Excuse me. There is my descriptive language. So, I have the evidence I need. I've gathered all that evidence. And now I'll review this format. Topic sentence, discussion of style, discu evidence from source, <clears throat> my rubric says that my topic sentence uses the proper format and clearly expresses an idea. Okay, well, I'm supposed to use the format. And do I want to say they're the same, or do I want to say they're different? I think I'll go for different. So let's try this. Both. S. E. Hinton's The Outsiders and Francis Ford Coppola's The Outsiders depict Dali's death. <clears throat> Describe the difference. But Coppola's depicts it with more tragedy. It's a good word. Notice that my topic sentence has used a specific word to describe the difference that I'm talking about. <clears throat> My topic sentence is done. Good. Discussion of style in source one. What do I think about this? Well, Hinton describes the scene very simply. She adds little detail. For instance, she writes There we go. I just talked about the style in source one how she's really simple with what she's doing, and then I provided evidence. Done. Notice that I've used a quotation for descriptive language. It's best to use a quotation with descriptive language. <clears throat> now I need a transition. Coppola does more than this. He uses low light blue and black colors and fog to intensify the tragedy of the scene. As 
Pony Boy and his friends run to Dally, the viewer can barely see them through the fog. The low light and fog make the scene <clears throat> darker and sadder. There I go. Discussion of style and evidence. I've described what I see in the scene. All I need now is a conclusion. And the conclusion can go something simply like this. This tragedy does not exist with the same emotion in Hinton's novel. That simply restates the basic idea. And I now have my conclusion. So what have I done? I gathered my evidence, I reviewed the format, I wrote, now I need to revise and review. I'll read the paragraph over. Both S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders and Francis Ford Coppola's The Outsiders depict Dally's death, but Coppola's depicts it with more tragedy. Hinton describes the scene very simply. She adds little detail. For instance, she writes, the wail of a siren grew louder and the police car pulled up across the street from the lot. Door slammed as the policeman leapt out. Dally had reached the circle of light under the street lamp, and skidding to a halt, he turned and jerked a black object from his waistband. Coppola does more than this. He uses low light, blue and black colors, and fog to intensify the tragedy of the scene. As Pony Boy and his friends run to Dally, the viewer can barely see them through the fog. The low light and fog make the scene darker and sadder. This tragedy does not exist with the same emotion in Hinton's novel. All six points are covered. Let me talk about what failings I saw in a lot of the student writing. I didn't see quotation marks for evidence in Source 1. I saw very little description of the actual scene for evidence in Source 2. I saw a very brief and general discussion of the style in, uh, in both, but I didn't see the specific clear evidence that I wanted. And that comes from quotation marks and concrete description of what the image looks like. I also saw topic sentences that did not follow this format. So here's my inference. I think students are doing this. I think you're reading the assignment. I think you're watching the tutorial videos, but I believe you're not taking notes and probably not paying attention. I think that you, of course, are viewing the clips. And then I think that you're writing. I know that you're writing. I'm not sure how much more of this you're doing. You read an assignment, you watch some tutorials, you watch clips, and then you write. Maybe you sort of understand the writing task, but you haven't done any of this, at least not very clearly. You barely gather evidence, because I haven't seen very much in there. And there's a little review of format before you write. I am positive that very few students do this last step. So. You're reading the assignment, you're watching tutorials, but you're not taking notes. You're trying to understand the writing task, but probably not doing it very well because you haven't read guidance materials in the rubric. You're viewing the clips, but you're not being specific about gathering evidence and reviewing the format before you write. You're writing, but you're not revising or reviewing. So if you can solve those problems, then you can write a much better answer. And your answer will probably be shorter and simpler than the one you wrote, except for those of you that wrote about two or three sentences. But this should read cleanly and answer everything that the assignment asked for. Remember this. Remember each step and apply it to the next multimedia analysis, and you should be fine. Do not forget to ask questions in class.